Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Yep, almost Happy New Year. A week from today, right? Yeah, so it's a joy to have all of you with us here today. Um, hope you have a wonderful day, whatever you have uh, planned for this afternoon. And um, reminder, of course, um, we are having services Sunday, uh, regular Sunday divine service. So if you're able, please come to that too. Lots of services uh, this time of year, this weekend. Um, in our prayers today, one prayer of, uh, for continued health and recovery and healing for Bob Kuntzman, one of our members who took a fall a few weeks ago and uh, fractured his hip, but he's doing much better and he was able to return home. So we'll pray for his continued uh, health and healing. So again, thank you all for being here. God's blessings to you. And on this Christmas day, this uh, special uh, festive day, holy day of the year, we'll begin our service uh, by processing into the church to our first hymn. So if you're able, please stand and face the back of the church as we sing our opening hymn, number 379, O Come All Ye Faithful. No. 
now in flesh appearing. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. For to us a child is born to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. 
the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. Alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, Grant that the birth of your only begotten Son in the flesh may set us free from the bondage of sin. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the the Nativity of our Lord Christmas Day is from Isaiah chapter 52. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice, Together they sing for joy, for eye to eye they shall see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people, he has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 1. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God in the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? 
Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you, will, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like a robe, you will roll them up. Like a garment, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. And from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only God who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. You may be seated. Our next hymn is 384 of the Father's Love Begotten. Oh, that birth 
forever blessed when the virgin full of grace by the Holy Ghost conceiving for the Savior of our race and the babe the world's redeemer first revealed his sacred face evermore and evermore this is he whom sears in all time chanted of with one accord whom the voices of the prophets promised in their faithful word now he shines the long expected let creation praise its lord evermore and evermore oh ye heights of heaven adore him angel hosts his praises sing past dominions bow before him and extol our God and King. Let no tongue on earth be silent, every voice in concert ring, evermore and evermore. Christ to thee with God the Father and O Holy Ghost to thee Him and chant and high thanksgiving and unending praises be Honor, glory, and dominion and eternal victory evermore and evermore Amen You may be seated I love that hymn we used to sing it at, uh, when I was in the choir at the seminary all the time so brings back good memories of that. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, last night we focused our attention on the Christmas account as recorded by St. Luke. And those words from chapter 2 of Luke's gospel about the birth of Jesus are very familiar to us. Many of us have large portions of them committed to memory. They are heartwarming and endearing words indeed. For Luke is a great historian. He includes the proper names of the people involved, Joseph, Mary, even Quirinius. He lists the names of places we can still find on a map today, Syria, Nazareth, Bethlehem. He describes the passionate emotions of the real people involved, fear, joy, relief. And so with the help of movies, Sunday school, Christmas programs, and our own imagination, we can see the events of that first Christmas night playing out in our minds. This morning, however, we focus our attention on St. John's account of the birth of Jesus. And his account is certainly less familiar to most people than Luke's. I've never seen a Christmas program or movie based on his words. In fact, I think it'd be hard to try to put one together. But nonetheless, John's telling of Jesus' birth is just as important as Luke's. For you see, John has a slightly different focus than Luke does in his writing. 
as we heard, there's nothing in, in John's account at all about the specifics, the details of Jesus' birth. For example, the trip to Bethlehem, the swaddling cloths, or the quaking shepherds. Rather, John's words focus specifically upon who this baby is, that Jesus is God. Now, of course, Luke tells us about the divinity of Jesus, too. He tells us, for example, that the one born in Bethlehem is Christ, the Lord. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, we read in Luke's Gospel. However, John focuses like a laser on that point. He draws our attention to the glory of the person of the Word made flesh, that the baby Jesus is none other than God himself. John confesses that it is God in the flesh who makes that first Christmas night stand out in history. God came to earth. He became flesh, incarnate, we say. And though many historians, scientists, politicians, and even some theologians miss the significance of this, God's holy people don't. Life was manifested in Jesus. His is the light of men. However, even on this joyous Christmas morn, we need to be cautioned that the world doesn't see Jesus the way John does or the way we do. We need to be warned that the world is already past the point of believing what John has written. Oh, the world will warm up to a human interest story as reported by Luke, loving all the details, the names, the places, the emotions, whether coming from the lips of a pastor speaking in a church or coming from the lips of Linus holding his blanket in a Charlie Brown Christmas. Running now every year for almost 60 years, I think, 55 years, something like that it's been on. The world can become sentimental to Luke's gospel. And yet, the world hardly gives any notice to the words of St. John about Jesus. And worse, when it does, it too often scorns them. St. John writes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's the truth about Jesus and about Christmas as John describes in his gospel. But that's not the truth taught in many of our leading universities and newspapers. For them, in the beginning, there were molecules or gases or nothing at all, but certainly no God who created all things. Rather, life, they assert, is simply the product of random evolutionary processes taking place over millions and billions of years. Others aren't quite so dogmatic about their assertions and simply say that we're not sure about the origin of the universe. But John is sure. He says that in the beginning was the Word, the pre-incarnate Christ, who later became flesh and dwelt among us that first Christmas. He was with God in the beginning. He was God, and he made all things. But does one really have to believe that Jesus is God, as John claims? Isn't it possible to believe that Jesus was born in Bethlehem without believing that Jesus also created the heavens and the earth? Why does the babe of Bethlehem need to be God the Lord, the God who made all things. Why are the baby Jesus and his existence as the Son of God before Bethlehem, in fact, from before the foundation of the world, from all eternity, why are these two things inextricable from one another? Or to put it another way, couldn't Jesus simply be human, but not God? Couldn't Jesus just be a great teacher or role model? one who teaches all men and women a better way to live, how to get along, how to be nice to one another, how to, how to be at peace with each other on earth? Isn't that something we all need? Couldn't Jesus just be a good guy, 
a best friend, a renaissance man of sorts? Why does he need to be God? Well, the world answers that Jesus doesn't need to be God. You're God. Rather, your God can be anything or anyone you want it to be. Your God can be anything from which you get help, comfort, pleasure, safety, or security. Money has long been a God for many, and it still is. Increasingly today, though, in this climate we find ourselves in, it's science. Follow the science, we are repeatedly told. Even when the commands generated from a cherry-picked and incomplete view of science are directly opposed to the commands of God himself. For example, a few weeks ago, the governor of Virginia strongly discouraged people from attending Christmas services and even blamed churchgoers for contributing to the spread of the virus. He told churchgoers that they don't need to sit in a church pew for God to hear their prayers. Now first, it is true that God hears our prayers wherever we are, here in church, in our home, in our cars, wherever we pray them to the Lord. But it's also true that God commands us to gather for worship. The Bible's clear about this. For example, it says in Hebrews 10, verses 24 and 25, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near, the day when the Lord Jesus promises to return. In fact, the Greek word for church is ekklesia, which simply means assembly or meeting or gathering, the gathering of God's people. And second, according to actual scientific data, it is wrong to blame churchgoers for contributing to the spread of the virus in any significant way, any more than going out to the store or some other place in society. According to a recent study from the New York State Department of Health, out of 46,000 people who contracted COVID-19, only 0.69%, 0.69% said they believed they contracted it from a religious gathering. Almost 74% of those surveyed said they contracted it at a private household gathering in their homes or in the home of someone else and another 8% in healthcare settings. So no, we gathering in God's house are not spreading the virus any more than it's being spread anywhere else. No, my friends, we must obey God rather than men, as the Bible says. We must defend our God-given rights, including the right to gather for worship, especially on Christmas, on Easter too. It was so difficult last Easter not to be able to gather for that most holy day of the year. We must not let it happen again if we can. We must defend the truth of Christmas and of Easter and of Scripture itself against the world's assault against it. The world is okay with Christmas so long as its focus is on Santa Claus and presents under the tree. The world makes a lot of money off old St. Nick. The world will even tolerate the heartwarming story of a baby lying in a manger. Lots of good movies are made on that. But when the church declares with St. John that this baby is none other than God himself, God in the flesh, who will come again on the last day to judge the world for its sin and disobedience of him, well, the world will have none of that. The world doesn't know Jesus as the only true God because the world doesn't know its sin, its wickedness, its evil. The world, writes John, is in darkness. John insists that the world was made by God, made by the one who is light, made by Jesus, but the world did not know him. Not then and not now. Why? Because darkness envelops the world and that darkness is sin. But John also confesses that there are some who are not in the darkness. They believe in Jesus. They believe that Jesus is God. 
Now, they don't believe in him because they are morally better or because somehow we are smarter than other people or because we have an inner light already burning within us. No, John says it best. They were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Truly, they have been born from above, from on high. The Lord has done the work. Being born of God is holy baptism's work. Holy baptism is God's work. Baptism is of God. As Luther writes in the small catechism, how can water do such great things? Certainly not just water, but the word of God in and with the water does these things along with the faith which trusts this word of God in the water. For without God's word, the water is plain water and no baptism. But with the word of God, it is a baptism that is a life-giving water, rich in grace and a washing of the new birth in the Holy Spirit, as St. Paul says in Titus chapter 3. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might have the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. Yes, baptism is God's work by which he washes away our sin and makes us his children. God's own child, I gladly say it, I am baptized into Christ as we sing in one of our hymns. God's people love the language of God, of John's gospel, and of God's work. John says the word was God. All things were made through him. The word became flesh and we have seen his glory. This is salvation talk. It's talk of the Savior. It's talk that the people who once walked in darkness, the darkness of death and sin, have, and who have now seen the light of Christ can understand. Luther says that a five or six or seven-year-old child can understand this talk. Our Sunday school children understand this talk. I love seeing and hearing the faith of our children expressed in, and displayed in our Sunday school opening devotions. Sadly, however, those who are still in darkness hate this talk of John. They refuse to confess their sin and the death they deserve for it. And thus, they cannot confess Jesus as Savior over sin and death. On the other hand, those in the light, the baptized, love this talk. They know their sin is covered by the glorious Savior, Jesus. You know, when Thomas confessed Jesus as my Lord and my God after Jesus appeared to him after his resurrection, Thomas was making a statement about the connection between our creation and redemption. You can't have one without the other. They go together, like cold in winter, like Christmas in presents, like sunshine in light. This Lord, standing alive before him, Thomas knew, is the one who had just so recently died. Were he not man, he could not have died in our place. But unless he is also God, he could never have conquered death for us. God's Son, Jesus, has brought redemption to the world in his flesh by the forgiveness of our sins. And yet he is also the Word creating at the creation of the world. Two natures in one, divine and human, in one person, Jesus Christ. You can't have one without the other. He is both Lord and God to be our Savior. What St. John wrote in his Gospel about the birth of Jesus was written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. My friends, don't expect the miracle of faith to be taught outside of the pages of Holy Scripture. Don't expect Jesus, the Word made flesh, the one who is both creator and redeemer, to be rightly and truthfully proclaimed in a National Geographic article this month or in a documentary about Jesus on the History Channel. However, you can expect these themes of Jesus as creator and redeemer to be covered here at this pulpit weekly in this holy assembly, this ecclesia. You can expect them to be heralded here in Christ's church in liturgy and hymn, whereby the darkness of your sin is covered by the light of Jesus' work. 
you can expect them to be delivered to you in this building, in the ordinary and in the supernatural. Yes, in an ordinary six-day period, our Lord did the supernatural. He created the heavens and the earth. Yes, the Lord of all became a man, a human being like you and me, born in a stall via the supernatural birth to a virgin. Yes, the Lord's supernatural body and blood are given to you in ordinary bread and wine for the forgiveness of your sins. Yes, simple water, but the extraordinary word of God poured upon the head of an infant forgives that child's sin. The word of God made the world, and the word of God became flesh. The word of God dripped his blood from the cross, and the word of God rose from the dead. The word of God has overcome your darkness, and the word of God brings you into his light. My friends, that's why we gather this holy day. That's why we come and adore him, Jesus, the Savior, the Word made flesh, who is also Christ, the Lord. My friends, quite simply, that is what Christmas is all about. Merry Christmas. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Jesus, the Word made flesh, in the joyous celebration of your nativity, we have seen your glory. Your goodness and loving kindness have appeared to us. Grant us comfort and peace in the knowledge of your incarnation in a blessed new year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Jesus, the Word made flesh, in your holy gospel we have seen your glory. Bless the preaching of the gospel from the altars and pulpits you have consecrated for the purpose of delivering your gift of faith through the preaching of your Word. Bless those called to preach and those called to hear that the light of your word may continue to illumine the darkness of our world. Abide with those who suffer persecution for confessing its truth. Lord, in your mercy. O Jesus, the word made flesh, by your sacrament of holy baptism we have seen your glory. Make all the baptized confident in the promise given to them in the waters of baptism. Give to all your people hearts that seek to bring their children quickly to the baptismal font. Continue to expand your kingdom through this blessed portal to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Jesus, the word made flesh, in your ongoing provision of daily bread, we have seen your glory. By your spirit, visit those who suffer, the sick, the sorrowing, the hospitalized, the poor, the destitute, the homeless, the unemployed. Remember those who have requested our intercessions, especially Bob Kunzman as he recovers from hip surgery, and for all those we name quietly in our hearts. May we not be given to despair, but entreat our Heavenly Father's protection even in times of great need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, Jesus, the Word made flesh, in your crucifixion and resurrection we have seen your glory. Give comfort to those who grieve. Give to all people a sure and certain hope in the resurrection of all the dead and eternal life for all believers in you on the day of your return. Keep us steadfast and faithful until that day. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. O Jesus, the Word made flesh, in your holy supper we have seen your glory. From your humble entry into our world in the womb of the Virgin Mary to your first bed in a feeding trough, you set aside the honor you rightly deserve to bless us with your presence. As you now come to us humbly under the forms of bread and wine, bless us with a right faith that we might worthily receive your body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, that seeing you in the person of your Son, we may know and love those things which are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning now and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Our closing hymn is number 387, Joy to the World.
and wonders, wonders of His.